She's one of the audio. On again. Okay. Okay. I don't really. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, you guys, I don't know how to mute this again. It has to, I have to be able to silence you guys and I thought I set it up that way. Um, Lynette, I need to see your camera. Today, so stay home, be safe, and stay home. Wisconsin's Democratic governor tried to postpone the election. The state's top health official issued this warning in person voting would, without question, accelerate the transmission of COVID 19 and increase the number of cases. But Republican lawmakers argued elections are a center of service. The courts agreed they should not be postponed. And today, President not muted. Somebody's making a lot of noise. For a conservative judge on the ballot. Better? You can't hear it. Oh. oh, no, no, no. I'm the only one who the noise the noise everybody's lighting up so i can't even start until this is muted jen i set it up so i but it's not working I think I got it. Can you hear me though? I want to make sure you guys can hear me for when I talk. I think we got it. <laughs> Just have to bear with me. This is the first time we're doing this with such a big class and more people are showing up as, as you can see. <laughs> so it's going to be a minute. <laughs> Thank you. 
if you don't have your camera on, uh, it's helpful. There's a there's a face. <laughs> I need to see your face because that's why we switched from the Facebook to this. Because for me to be able to teach properly, I need to be able to see what you're doing so I can make sure you're doing it right. Otherwise, why are we doing it, right? I'm here to teach you properly and to teach you good form and proper sign formation. So if I can't see you, I can't help you, right? So bear with me for the first few minutes while we get everything and while I'm trying to look. And I have to do this because I can't see well from far away. So you'll see a lot of, so bear with me. And I'm trying to do this as much, as closely as possible to how I teach in person. But in person, I never use my voice, never, and learn a lot faster. And I hand out papers with the vocabulary and we follow that. And so it has a system. Here I'm in my home and I'm doing my best to give you the most awesome experience and the most complete ability to learn ASL the right way from a deaf perspective. So I may have, I'm going to have to talk a little bit, <laughs> but I also did my whiteboard because I couldn't figure out how to do the whiteboard on Zoom. It kept popping up and I wouldn't be able to see y'all beautiful faces. So see somebody's having, I hope that somebody's having a glass of wine. You can drink during my class. I'm just saying, I should have thought of that before I started. <laughs> I only have juice. <laughs> so you can see how I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm hoping it doesn't fall down. I'm hoping I don't hit it. I'm hoping I don't erase it by accident. <laughs> so we're going to see how this works tonight. I'm, I, this is a new setup for me. Okay, so a little patience, and I appreciate it. And it's beautiful to see all your smiles. Um, if you have good ability to light yourself so I can see you um, and give yourself a sign space where I can see about this much of you, is that possible for you guys to do? Some of you are a little close. You see my space. If you can go like this with your arms, just to your head, like this, and then where I can see just, just below your chest, this, this kind of a, a square. That way I can see your whole sign space, which is very important. Every person has their own sign space. And I'm going to, uh, somebody walked away, <laughs> but that's okay. I'm trying to set it up. So I'm giving you guys a little bit of time to make sure you're set up also, so that you can get the most out of this experience, okay? Um, so I just wanna make sure you guys are all set, that's great. Um, I had made a video on the Facebook, some of you may not have seen it, but I was the first person to make a video about COVID and about how uh, it's a great time to be learning ASL because when people speak, they tend to expel spit. That's normal. They're, that's completely normal that when people talk, droplets pass, correct? We all know this, right? So, but when you sign, first of all, your sign space is different. Hearing people tend to get close, right? Real close. Deaf people don't. We need at least an arm's distance from you to be able to if you can do that and reach your arms all the way out and the other person can do the same thing, that's like a perfect sign space for people. So guess what? The spit won't travel. So it's a great time to learn ASL because you can use it if you go visit somebody or you have somebody you can talk through a window or something, you can just sign. There's no touching, there's no spitting, it's a great time to be learning sign right now, right? So this is perfect. And I'm here to give you the best experience I possibly can under these circumstances, but I'm gonna give you every bit of energy I put into all of my classes. So um, I'm gonna introduce myself. I wanna see a raise of hands. How many people saw <laughs> the news on uh, Spectrum today? And that's how you found me. Yeah. Great. They did a wonderful story. If you haven't seen it and you have Spectrum, they did a wonderful story. The Kingston News did also, and I have a few other places that are adding to it. Um, so we may have more as time goes on. 
Um, but right now, this is wonderful. So um, I was teaching them, teaching the ASL on Facebook Live for a while. But it was very difficult because as a deaf person, I'm not used to using my voice. I was not born deaf. But when I sign and when I teach, I don't use my voice. So the other thing is part of the deaf culture lesson is that you cannot sign ASL and speak at the same time because then you're not signing real ASL. You're signing in English word order and that's not ASL, that's English with signs, right? ASL is not English. ASL is American Sign Language and it's unique to the United States and English, in, uh, United States and English speaking parts of Canada and a few other places. But what you may not know is that every country has their own sign language. For example, French, Fr French, France <laughs> has FSL, I'm sorry, uh, LSF, language of signed French. In Quebec, it's uh, LSQ, language of signed Quebec. In Germany, it's German Sign Language. Auslan is Australian Sign Language. Mexico has its own sign language. Spain has a different sign language. Every country, and in fact, if, you, if you're in Africa, all the countries in Africa on that continent have their own signed languages also. So it's not universal, and a lot of people think it is because they just assume it's all sign, but it's not. In fact, I'm learning BSL right now because I have a lot of British friends and they saw my idea and they contacted me on Twitter and asked if they could copy it and do it in BSL. And I thought, what a great idea if other deaf people around the world pick up the same idea and teach their sign language also. So, but here we have a very international class. I have people in New York and in the US and in Canada. I have people from California. I have people from Britain right now. I have people from China. I have people taking our classes right now from all over the world because they're interested in learning another language regardless. So it's a great thing to know that it's not universal because when I talk to a person, a friend of mine from England, we can communicate, but here's the example. Our alphabet and numbers are one-handed. We do our alphabet and our numbers on one hand. But England, for example, and many other countries as well, use two-handed. So their vowels are on their fingers. So it'd be A-E-I-O-U, J-E-N-N. -N. <laughs> I can't do it, I'm not that good. I'm still learning myself. So I'm learning another language also, but it's not universal. So that's a really important deaf culture lesson to know. So that, it, you know, it's not. If you go to Canada and you find some deaf people, you'll be good. But it's not universal. But another great thing is that when you do learn the visual language of ASL, and maybe you travel to another country, you'll become used to seeing language visually and how it moves. And you'll understand when I teach you about facial expressions that you will probably be able to understand a deaf person or a signing person in that country better than a speaking person speaking their language because you'll start recognizing how to catch what they're saying in sign. So it's kind of cool. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my notes. I have two computers here on this. <laughs> so, so that I wanted to tell you, it's not English either. ASL is American Sign Language. It's the third most used language in America. You'd think it was more, it would be taught more and maybe taught in schools all the way up as a second, you know, language, but it's the third most popular and used language in the U.S. So, but it's a language. It has its own structure, grammar, syntax, and everything the same as any other spoken and foreign language. So you're learning a foreign language because, for example, uh, if you saw the news, I taught that, that wonderful reporter, Raven, some signs. And she said, the classes start at seven o'clock, correct? That's English. In ASL, you sign it, starts time seven. 
So you don't say, oh, we start at seven o'clock. We start time seven, right? So that's part of the structure. Um, at things like your name, what? Not what's your name. So many people who have, who have learned sign before or learned from a hearing instructor, they tend to sign more PSE or more English. So they'll sign, hi, how are you? I'm fine. My name is, that's a lot of work, right? In ASL, my name what? My name, how are you? Nice meet you. And it's directional. So we don't use those little words. And we have, it, ASL has its own structure, just like any other foreign language. So if you've ever taken another foreign language in school, how many people have taken another foreign language? Or have even a little bit, maybe years ago. And I know you have some German, because I know you dance. And I know we had to learn when we were dancing years ago. So even a little bit. You remember learning that there's a structure and how it's put together, correct? It's the same in ASL. It is not universal and it is not English. So I'm going to teach you the vocabulary and the signs and then how to put them together in the proper way. So you're automatically using ASL, not sign language. And there is a difference. There's a big difference. So I teach the language. Now, part of the language go hand in hand. They're equally as important. One's not here and here. They're, they're both the same. Is ASL and deaf culture. One does not exist without the other. So you don't have ASL and don't know deaf culture. It, because ASL is the language, and it, this is how it's phrased, is of, by, and for the deaf. So you need to understand deaf culture, the usage of the language, appropriate uh, manners in the deaf community as a hearing person learning the language. There's a lot of those things that are the same as learning about another culture. But this, the language and the culture go hand in hand. So I will be giving you deaf culture lessons because that's such an important part of learning. And I will speak those, of course. When we're doing the vocabulary and we're doing this, I'm looking at my computer and we'll do it where I'm pointing. Now, did some of you read my post and have, do you have a notebook or anything where you can write down the vocabulary? Yay, some of you are showing me. If you didn't today, it's okay. Do it another day, get a piece of paper and a pen because then you can start making a list and writing down all the vocabulary we're learning. And then later you can review it and you'll have something to work with. And that's, that's a good thing. So I put it down here. Like I said, in my classes, they get a handout. So it's up to you to kind of write it down as we're doing it. And then you have a list. And what'll happen is, as we keep going through the lessons, you'll create your own little booklet of what you've been learning so that you have something to practice with. And when the videos are posted, you have something to really practice with because you'll be able, okay, we learned that. And you can go through your list. So if you don't have it today, no worries. Maybe next time on Thursday, you can have that. The other thing about the grammar I wanted to show you from uh, the interview was that when Raven said every Thursday, Tuesday and every Thursday. So we don't say every Tuesday every Tuesday or every Thursday or every Saturday, every Saturday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, which she did wonderfully. She included the grammar, her signs were clear. It was wonderful. She really did a beautiful job and I'm so proud of her. So you can do that too. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna give you a little bit of deaf culture and we're gonna get started right on this, okay? So the English and ASL being different languages, we've covered. Now, all deaf, that's a big phrase, all deaf. People think all deaf read lips. No. All deaf sign. Mm -mm. There are some that use cued speech, some that went to a hearing school or a mainstream school and they are more oral and they read lips and maybe sign a little bit for reinforcement, things like that. But not all, um, not all wear hearing aids. 
Some of us don't like them. I tend to not wear mine because they're annoying and they don't really help. So there's a lot of generalizations about deaf people and ASL that are very common misconceptions that part of my job as a deaf instructor is to dispel those myths and help everybody understand. And then you can pass on that information to people who may not know, right? So the first one is lip reading. You think everybody lip reads? Now people know I lip read pretty well, but still I only understand about 60% and that's highballing. <laughs> so I have to figure it out and fit it in and what missing there, what did I misunderstand and things like that. It's a lot of work, it's exhausting, it gives you a headache and it's this. This is what we're doing. So it's really stressful. So I'm gonna give you what I call, and I do this for all my students, I'm gonna do the Welcome to My World Challenge. Are you ready? This is the lip reading challenge. So I'm gonna say something without using my voice. See if you understand me, and then you'll see what it's like from our perspective. Are you ready? Anyone? Yeah, I see a lot of faces. I see your face go, oh my God, what did she do to me? <laughs> did you understand any of that? No. That's what it's like for us in the real world. People go, do you read lips? And I go, yeah, a little. Well, this is what I get. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> So that's what deaf people experience. It's really hard. And even if you have a hearing aid and you can hear some misunderstandings, 90, 19, watch. I love you and olive juice. Yes, you know that, some of you saw that movie. Um, you know, 90, um, 80 and 18, They're, that look exactly the same. And again, many hearing people, they, you know, you don't want to overpronounce and go. Because then I'm just like, no, because it looks like I'm reading your tongue, not your lips. Okay. So just if you do talk normally, don't yell because we can't hear you anyway. And what happens is when you talk loud, it overemphasizes your mouth and they don't look right. So if you do and you have to lip read, you know, with somebody. Just hi. Did you understand that? You all got that, right? How are you? So if you do that, keep it short and simple and clear, but it's still very difficult. So that's why signing is so great. Now, if you're not really great at signing yet, but you still want to communicate or there's somebody there that you want to say something to or they're asking for something, write. Just write. Write back and forth on a piece of paper. All deaf people carry a piece of paper and pen. We're used to it. So that's another way. But can you see how hard that is? So that's called the Welcome to My World Challenge. <laughs> and I always do little challenges like that for my students so that they can see what it's like from a deaf person's perspective. And because I speak really well, people think and assume I can hear as well as I can speak, and that's just not true. And that's the same thing with other deaf people. Do they all talk? No. Some choose not. Some don't want to. Some had speech therapists growing up, but they were told they don't sound good, so they just don't do it. They're afraid, they're embarrassed, and they should not be, right? But there's many reasons why many deaf people do or don't speak, or how well they speak. Just be patient because it's like what you have to think of it is is that a deaf person has an accent just like somebody from another country they just have an accent so it just takes a little patience there's no difference so it's just a little patience but everybody does not do that so the other thing i wanted to do is describe the difference between asl c and pse 
Those are the three differences in signed language. So ASL, as I just explained, is American Sign Language with grammar, structure. It has its own linguistics properties. It's, it's studied all over the country and great universities by great scholars, you know. Um, so it's an actual language. Then you have C, S-E-E, -E, which means signed exact English. And that's what a lot of hearing people teach, and it's not ASL. It's very confusing for us. It's very ex exaggerated, and it's too much when it's not necessary, is to those kind of words. We don't need them, and it just kind of confuses us. So um, C would be like this. Um, That's a lot, right? That's like, by the time you finish that, I'm like, <laughs> right? So in ASL, it's, hi, how are you? Nice meet you. We don't do R, is, my name is. We don't do those things. That's the difference between signing exact English and ASL. And then you have what's in between that. That's what most hearing students and hearing people sign once they learn a lot more. It's called Pigeon Signed English. So it's ASL signs and a little bit of grammar, a little bit, not a lot, maybe, maybe a tad structure, but not really. But you're, you're speaking in English word order. So you may say, hi, my name is Jennifer. What's your name. So they're still adding more so that it's exactly English like that. Does that make sense? I just want to see everybody nod so that you're getting it. Okay, good. So those are the differences. So most people fall in the in-between. So when, for example, I speak and sign at the same time, I'm not really using ASL because ASL is a different language. I can't use ASL grammar and structure right, when I'm speaking in a completely different language. <laughs> it's impossible to do. It's like trying to speak uh, French and Spanish at the same time. You, you can't, you can mix it up and English word here, Spanish word here and mix it up, but that's not the same thing, right? So when I turn off my voice, it's ASL. And that's why I encourage all of you when you're learning and practicing to not use your voice because you will automatically fall into English. And I'm trying to encourage you to do ASL. Let me tell you, ASL is a lot easier. <laughs> the other thing is um, that's very important is facial expressions. Our facial expressions and your facial expressions are the equivalent of your vocal inflections, okay? So if, for example, uh, I want to say in, in ASL. You can tell how mad I am, correct? Because of this. But if you don't use your facial expressions, like, I have no idea if you're mad or not. You just could be flip, you know what I mean? We need to see your face because what it's what it looks like to us this is what it'll sound like to you if i did it to you the same way i'm so mad i'm really angry that was really awful i really hate when they do that that stinks oh wow right okay does it making sense though you're all going oh yeah i get so this makes sense right so your facial expressions i teach them while i teach you the vocabulary like the questions and things. We need to see a question face. And when we get to emotions, you can show such a gamut of emotions with the same sign and a different facial expression that's more in focused or intense, right? So you don't want to sign something that sounds like, I'm so happy to see you. Wow, you look great. Instead of, you see the difference? So your facial expressions are just as important for you to practice when you do and when you're learning here as it is when you're using it and when you, voc you, know, you use your vocalizations to tell somebody, get out of my face, right? <laughs> so if you go in ASL, it looks like you're just kind of waving away a fly. 
face and we depend on it. So if you do happen to lip read to speak to somebody because you haven't learned enough sign, include your facial expressions so that that person can kind of follow what you're saying and understand your emotions, if that's what you're left to have to do, okay? That's just, that's just a, a hint because it's helpful. And I'm here to encourage communication, clear communication. Is that cool? Are we ready to rock and roll? Now, I know some of you may have taken ASL before. I know some of you are my students. Some are other people's students. Some, but it's really great for review. And there are some things with the alphabet that I need to correct because I see a lot of incorrect uh, hand shapes for the alphabet. And I'll, when I get to the K's and the P's, I'll explain why. Uh, it's, a, it's a thing and I have a real, yeah, everybody has their pet peeve, right? Well, K's and P's are mine, and I'll explain that when we get to them. So this is my uh, beginning of this, to be able to see you guys do it and make sure we start with proper form. And the reason that's important is because the more you start learning and you start picking up and you're, you're becoming more fluent in the language and you're able to have even the most basic conversations, and you start signing more and you relax a little bit more, signs become like you're speaking. You don't always speak like this and speak so correctly like this, do you? No, absolutely not. But we all learn how to say our T's clearly and our P's clearly, right? But when you speak, you're more relaxed. Same thing with any other language. So when you're signing more conversely and you're talking, your signs are gonna get more relaxed. So clarity and proper form of the signs is really important because they'll start relaxing the more and more and more you learn. So that's why I'm kind of a stickler on that. So I wanna be able to see you guys do them and we'll do that, okay? Now I'm trying to make sure I can see everybody. Karen, I see Karen. Hello, Karen, hello, are you, darling? I can't see you, I can only see about this much of you. Is there any way to get, ah, it's my girl. That's what I wanna see, perfect. Cause I wanna be able to see everything you're doing. Can you get it? Let's give her one second because you have to prop it up. I know everybody's got phones and stuff and you got to try to kind of figure out how to prop them up and I get it, believe me. <laughs> so we'll give her a minute just so because I can see everything. As long as I, if I can see this much of you, we're golden. She's going to fix that up. Did she go? Oh, there she is. I'm like looking for Karen down here and her window popped up because more people showed up. So I'm going. So bear with me, I'm still getting used to all these boxes, okay? <laughs> so hello, new people who just joined. That's perfect, perfect. Everybody's in the perfect space. So we're gonna start with the alphabet, very slowly and clearly to start with, so I can see where you guys are, okay? So we're gonna start with A. So I'm gonna look really nice. Make sure your finger is right like that. Why? Because there's a hand shape that's used for a lot of signs that's called the open A, and it's very different. So your A should just be, and relax. Don't, like, like that. Relax. It's sign language. We're not doing brain surgery here, right? It's language, and language is communication, and that's what's important. So relax. There you go. And here's another hint. I tell everybody to keep your elbows and your arms, like, kind of touching your, the side of your body. That gives you the perfect space for finger spelling and doing your alphabet. It's, it's where you will sign your name, where you'll finger spell a word right here. And it helps you from going like this. And what's gonna happen is you're all gonna get sore and you're gonna get like, ah, uh, and then you're gonna wanna drop out because you're gonna go, ah, oh, that stinks, it hurts. I don't want you to hurt, I want you to chill, right? And I want you to relax and enjoy this experience. There you go, I see some people going like this. Get yourselves all chilled out. Good, okay, so A. I'll bring it a little closer so you can see it. Um, let me see who I can't see. Karen, can you bring, there you go. I'm just gonna do this when I just get you guys in the right space. There you go. I see y'all. Beautiful. Uh, Beth, put your finger right in there like this. Not like that, like that. There you go, just straight up, just relax it. You don't have to do that. Everybody just relax. It's just this, say it. There you go. Well done, good job, A. B. Now this is, you got to keep those fingers together. Otherwise that's a four. So we have to be specific. And again, just relax. Don't stress. Good job. Now I know the C is going to be really hard. I don't know if you'll get it. 
but we're going to try. I know, just I'm going to give you all the time in the world to do that. <laughs> just a nice C. Okay, yeah, don't turn your hands out like this. And I, I know that. So when I correct you, it's because I know, and I spend a lot of my time in classes, a lot of my students are people who came from other people's classes to come and, and learn the right way and get corrected. And a lot of hearing teachers teach this. First of all, doesn't that hurt? That's awkward. C, this is where it should be. Just relax. Nice C. Yep, that's where your C belongs. Open your C a little bit more. Make, don't make it this big, just a nice relaxed C. Beautiful job, beautiful C. D is just, it's just, it's a nice, don't close it like that, that's a one. So just make a nice little circle and then put that finger straight up. Now, if you think about it and you look at it, it almost looks like a D from your perspective. It looks like a D. So don't worry about your perspective. Worry about this perspective. See it? There you go. Beautiful job. I'm trying to see who's down here. Jody, just relax your arms, babe. Are you holding your arms on the, on the side of a couch? You have, uh, okay. Because what's going to happen is if you guys hold your arms up and don't just relax them, you really are going to get, this is going to start hurting like nobody's business. I guarantee it. it you're going to get very sore. So I don't want you to get sore. I want you to be very cool. So just, and it's right here. Very relaxed with your elbow against your waist, and that's your perfect spot. D. Beautiful job. E. Now, E, just relax it. I see some, peop some people do this. Wow, that even hurts me, right? Watch. Here's your E. Just relax. It goes under, and these just curl over that way. See it? And just like that. Nice and easy and forward. Yep, your, your letters are always palm forward. All your letters are palm forward except for like your C, but every, everything is here. So A, B, C, D, right, D. If you turn it this way, you're not wrong. If it's more comfortable, it just re it's gonna depend. You'll find out as we go, it's gonna depend on what you're spelling, where the space is, but just keep it relaxed. E, good. Now, if you look at it, turn it and look at it, you'll see that it looks kind of like an E, right? Sort of, right? It's a little bit. I try to kind of give some hints to think that how it's, try to remember it. So, so E. Now F, I always tell people to think of a feather and make those fingers nice and wide. This is not an F. This is, this is a different thing, okay? F, beautiful job. I'm just looking, so you gotta just give me a second. Allison, can I see you? Nope, that's a W. There you go, good girl. No, no, see, if you think, don't apologize if I correct you. It's part of learning, and I want you to do it right and be happy with what you're learning. It's all good. Everybody in the beginning when they're learning, and even some people later, they get confused, and this is a three, or this is a this, or this is a, you see what I'm saying? It's all good, no stress. No stress here. I don't want stressful students. Now, all right, and looks like you're smoking a joint. Can you just? <laughs> <laughs> it does if you see her just keep it over here and away from your face because otherwise people will think like really Ann? i don't know i have my suspicions so but make your finger make sure they're nice and wide because if you practice it nice and wide as you start finger spelling and more you'll get more relaxed but they have to be separate beautiful job okay g do like this with your fingers or you're almost going to pinch but they're not touching and you turn it this way so that your forefinger is facing out like that. I'm gonna bring it to the camera. Beautiful job. Excellent, 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 beautiful job. I see y'all. Good girl. Yeah, I see you got it. Good job. G. Now H, keep it right there. Watch this. Boink. <laughs> the two fingers out. But remember, don't do this. The thumb has to be in. That's your H. Good job, everybody. Excellent job. Good. H. I, very hard, very hard, very tough, tough stuff, tough stuff. <laughs> it's so hard. I know. This is a hard one. J, you just draw the J with your pinky, not your forefinger. There you go, your pinky. You just draw it. J. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, your K is your P up this way, and then your P goes downwards. And I'm going to be very picky about this. Do you guys know P? I want to see first what I'm seeing. Oh, I see lots of, oh boy. No, P's, oh, I'm sorry, K's, my apologies. K's, 
Kay's. Kay's is up. If you haven't learned it yet, I'm looking to see for people who have so I can explain why I'm very specific. All right, I'm seeing. Do I have anybody here who's under 18? Not that it matters. I'm sure you've heard these words before. I'm just saying. All right, my students know how I do this. This, okay, what does that look like to you? Sticking out. Little bitty boy part. It's like a baby laying, just been born without a diaper on. That. That's not a K. So I'm going to show you how to make uh, the perfect K. Take your thumb and, and your middle finger and touch it here. Touch it to your knuckle and keep that really straight. And then your forefinger goes up really straight. And then it's just formed like this. It's not here, it's just here. So make that as straight as you can. Now, I know some people have arthritis, sometimes when I'm tired, but try to keep it as straight as possible. And if you use the middle finger to reinforce it, we have no penises. Now, the other reason I say that is when you do your P, this is the, sub I'm gonna teach you guys on Thursday about legs and this representing legs and walking around. So if this is your P, what does that look like? Yeah, put some underwear on, dude. That's all I'm saying. So this is how I, my students are laughing so hard right now. <laughs> because I, that's how I teach in class. I correct by telling you what you're really signing so you'll never make the mistake again. And I use humor to do it. Because why not? So here's your K. I, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see any little penises up through anybody's fingers. <laughs> Y'all are laughing at me like, this lady is insane. Uh, Deb, turn it, turn it more this way. It doesn't have to be this way. Just relax it. There you go. So if, you, if your fingers, but to see it, I want to see it this way. If your fingers spelling Kelly, for example, you'd go. But for me to see it, I just want to see it sideways. Uh, Anne, can you back up a little bit your hand? Because you're kind of right in the, there you go. Now straighten that finger up if you can. I know you have arthritis. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No penises anymore. All the penises are gone. Yay. Okay, so remember, we're going to go straight to the P and then we're going to go back. So your K, just drop it. Keep those penises out. There you go. No penises, no penises, no penises, no penises. Now don't make it a V. It's got to look like that. You see how it looks like, like, a, like a leg running? And you just put it right there. Good, everybody's penises went away. I'm so proud of you. But do you see why I say that? Because you can see what it looks like. And that way it's very clear and it's the perfect K and P. And if you think about the army, right? KP duty, right? And your G, if you just drop it that way, is a Q. So think of the magazine, the men's magazine GQ. So I'm gonna do it this way so you can see it. Your G is this way, right? So all you do is take your G, drop it that way, straight down. Good job, excellent work, excellent. So I just wanted to show you because of the same handshake and the same form, but, uh, and you know, they move, that's all. So we're gonna go back, we did our K. Now I wanna see your L's. And it's a hard one, I know this is the hardest one to do. Your L's. Looks like an L, right? Doesn't it? Cool. Just looks right like an L. There you go. Beautiful job. L. Now, if everybody remembers their cursive writing, if you learned that as a kid, M looks like the M you draw. Three fingers over, you put your thumb over your pinky, and three fingers go down like this. I'll bring it close to the camera. Can you see it? Oh, that turned that way. There's your M. So you have three fingers over that thumb. So that being said, if the three is how you used to sign it when we taught in second grade, three is the M, N would be what? Two fingers over it. So that's a good way to remember it, how you think you write in cursive. So the M is three, the N is two. Now, one of the hardest letters of all to do is an O. I don't know. Can you handle it, y'all? Can you handle it? <laughs> there you go. Nice and easy. Now, make a nice O like this, because if you do this, that's called a flat O. It's a different hand shape, and it's used for different signs like home, more, things like that. But an O should look like an O. And just relax it just like this. Everybody, just relax and take a breath. Chill out. No stress, no muss, no fuss, right? O. All right, now you remember your P. No penises, everybody. A nice P. There you go. 
gonna look, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job. Excellent work. I'm so proud of you. That's great. So uh Q, we did the Q is the G upside down. So it's just this, this, it looks like you're pinching something, right? And it's just this way. Just just bend your wrist. Now, some of you are, are really starting to do this and you're gonna start feeling it literally by the time we get to the numbers. Relax your arms, put it right here. Just relax. As long as I can see it, you're all good. So if you have this space, you're perfect. So if I do this, it's because I wanna make sure. Okay, so just bear with me. So Q, R, you just, it's this, palm forward, put your thumb in and you just cross your finger. It's like, oh, good luck, I hope, yay, right? But it's an R. So you just cross them as much as you can. Beautiful job, everybody. Beautiful R's, R. Now S, I tell people to think of a fist, fist. Make a fist, fist. No, you know, don't make a fist this way. Make the, your, your letters will always be palm out. S, fist, fist. Beautiful job, beautiful. Now T is gonna be a very important uh, letter to learn because it also is gonna be the sign for toilet and potty if you have to go. So these are important things to know. So T is just one, one finger over your thumb. Can you see that? Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So if you have to go potty and deaf people wanna know, because we can't hear where somebody goes. So that's part of a deaf culture thing. If you're in a room with deaf people and you're gonna just escape to the bathroom, you have to go potty, you just kind of go, and deaf people go, because they don't know where people go. They can't hear you and things like that. It's part of the culture to let people know. They don't need to know what you did in there, but you need to let them know. <laughs> so it's just, and so toilet, having to go potty, you just shake it just a little bit, gotta go to the toilet. See, isn't that cool? And if you turn it, which you'll, you'll learn your days of the week soon, if you turn it and just very lightly do this, it's Tuesday. Pretty cool. So you kind of just learned three signs right there. So Tuesday, so T. U is just that. That's your U. And if you think about it, kind of looks like a U, right? Now your fingers have to stay tight together. Why? Because of V. There you go, V. Now V goes forward. Number two is this way. And that's how we differentiate it when I teach you the numbers. So make sure it's a nice V. Don't kind of do this because people might go, it's a U, it's a V. Make it a U and a V. Beautiful, beautiful. I have to say, I'm trying to say, Karen, can you move your hand over a little bit to your, there you go. I'm like, I'm trying to think, which app is she? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful V. Okay, so W. Now, be careful with this. Why? This is also the number six. Right? People think ASL is so easy. Things can be interchangeable if they're just not put in context right or formed properly. This is why I told you I'm very stickler on this stuff. So W. Nice W. This, this is how I do it so it makes it easy. Just kind of put the finger on your thumb. And that kind of helps. Like if I do this and I don't really push on my thumb, see how weak it is. But if I push on it, it automatically pushes the muscles in your hand so that your fingers make a really beautiful W. Excellent job. Beautiful. X is this. It's just that. And somebody was talking to me the other day, say, why isn't that R? It looks like R and this should be X, right? Because they cross. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't create this language. So it ain't on me, I'm just saying. So X, yep, it's just this, X. Turn it, uh, I don't see a name up here. I'm trying to see who it is. Uh, lady with the glasses in the corner. I can't see you very well. Yeah, just nice like that, there you go. So I'm sorry, if I can't see your name, I'm sorry if I'm gonna say lady in the corner. So my apologies. I'm not being rude, I'm just trying to make sure I see everybody. X, 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 beautiful. Now why? Now if you think about it, you're, if you if you take it down your arm just in your own mind, remember it, it looks like a Y, doesn't it? Isn't that cool? So if you do this, it looks like a Y. And this, this hand shape is also used for signs like wrong and, and Y and things like that. So it's important that's nice and clear. Beautiful. Now, the all important Z. Another really hard one. I know that these, some of those word letters are really 
<laughs> I know I'm, I'm teasing you, but that right Z. You just draw the Z, just like you drew the J with your pinky. You draw the Z with your forefinger. Yep, just bump, bump, bump. Good job. All right. No, yeah, don't. Yeah, uh, uh, Anne was saying she does it like this. Some people have done, and it's incorrect. Yeah, but it's. By the way, if you do this. First of all, I will understand it because I'm not stupid. It still looks like I say, <laughs> but it's not right. So I try to teach it the right way. But it's a very, it, these are, I'll show you the common mistakes with letters for finger spelling that so many people, for some beginners for a while, it can go on for a while until people get used to it. Some people confuse F with D. Uh, when I was first learning as a kid, I would do this. So I, I would say, I would think this was a D and this was an F. And I would go, um, people go, you're dead? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so it happens to the best of us. It happened to me when I was a kid learning. So that's one. So F and D. The other one is that people will do uh, J and Z. You see what I'm saying? So it, all that is, is practice. That's all it is. Now on my Facebook page and on my YouTube as well, and I'll share that one. I have, after we're all done, I'll post it tomorrow with the YouTube one that has just the alphabet. And I also have a, a form that has pictures of me with the, with the alphabet formed properly. And you may be able to print it, you can take a picture of it, you can keep it or you can go and you can practice with the YouTube one. Um, that will help you a lot uh, just to be able to practice. Um, learning from pictures, two-dimensional, you see the pictures, it's impossible because ASL is a three-dimensional language. It moves, it breathes, it's spatial, it's directional. From a, un, unless you already learned and you're really good at it, then you can go back for reference, but it's not a good way to learn because it's two-dimensional. So I did actual pictures of me doing the ABCs and that's very helpful. And I'll post it on Facebook and you can screen grab it and copy it and use it, okay? So that'll be great. All right, so now we're gonna go back and without my voice, we're gonna slowly go through the alphabet and I'm gonna kind of do my, my typical, I can't see from far away with my reading glass, <laughs> sorry. Um, and watch you guys. So let's start with I'm not gonna use my voice. I'm just gonna watch you guys because this is how I do it when I teach. Good. B. One finger for G. J. There you go. Just very simple. You don't have to. That's it. It's all in the wrist. So much of sign language, it's in the wrist. All right, let's see those K's. I'm going to look real careful. I see some penises. Watch, see that? I'm do turning it the wrong way, but I just so you can see it. See how I rest my I rest my thumb on the knuckle of the middle finger and then this one goes straight up. That way you're not getting mad. Beautiful job. Wow, you guys. There you go. Good. 
There we go again. Ready? Don't do that. That's like an upside down V and that represents legs. So again, take your, if you have to think about it, take your K, do that. And it's the same thing. It's just down here. It just goes, I'm going to turn it that way. See it? And you just, again, just relax your arms. You don't have to do this. I just want you all to chill. Because when you finger spell, like for your name, when I show you, like I do, it'll be, see, I'm right here. I don't have to do this and this. You're going to get sore. And then you're going to be like, <laughs> and I don't want you to feel that way. So P, just going to see it again. Nice P's, nice P's, beautiful. It's this, remember it's your G, but it's upside down. Good. Good job. Nice, just cross them nice if you can, as nice as cross as you can. Beautiful. Ah, oh, Karen, turn your palm forward. Palm, there you go. And just relax. Everybody just yeah, take a breath. There you go. Beautiful. Remember, think fist. Because some people confuse A and S. Because they do kind of, they're only a slight movement apart, right? So think fist. Good. Beautiful. <laughs> and uh, so that's again that that one is you has to get used to <laughs> and everybody excellent give you guys a hand this is how deaf people clap so this is how y'all gotta get your hand Excellent job, beautiful, beautiful job. Woohoo! Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So now we're gonna go to the numbers. We're gonna do one, two, 10. And we're gonna gradually go up every lesson higher because I don't wanna do too much if we get into the teens right now. And then we're gonna get into all that. I don't know what time it is. That's okay. Do you guys have time? Because I bought the room, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we needed time to get started when we first opened up. So we'll get used to that more. So we'll do the numbers real quick. Now we do these numbers, the first numbers backwards. So one, with your palm facing you, good. Now, three is not this. This is three. Can you see it? There you go. Good job. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now five can go forward or backward. I tend to do it forward. Really, I always say it's up to my students. Good. And make it a nice big five. This will become sloppy because the five hand shape is used for a lot of things like finish and fine and mother and father and things like that. So it needs to be clear. Now six. This, I'm going to show you how to count this down. Here's a really cool hint. Your numbers from six, seven, eight, nine are going to count down from your pinky finger. You're going to touch your thumb to your pinky for six. Good. Then you're going to put that pinky up and touch that ring finger to your thumb. That's your seven. Good. Eight. Try to keep the other fingers as straight as you can. And I know that's, that's a skill and it's hard to do. So it's just practice. Eight. And then, so where do you think nine goes? Looks like your F, doesn't it? That's why I say sometimes you gotta be really careful. <laughs> okay, so there's your nine. Add 10. You just shake that little thumb right like that. So let's go back and we'll count and I won't use my voice. You guys did great. Ready? Yeah, again, you can do it forward or backward. None of that. It's not wrong if you do five this way. It's not wrong if you do it this way. That's all up to you. 
So let me see your seven. Y'all got that. All right, you're already ahead of me. Go, girl. Seven, you guys are ahead of me. Good, good, good. Eight, let me see those eights. <sighs> you guys are so awesome. Nine, 10. Oh my God, you guys learned one to 10 faster than most everybody else does. That was beautiful. Excellent work. Holy cow. Okay, we're going to get to this now. So, hello is an open B handshake. It's not a B. Some people do, it looks kind of like you're saluting. It's not wrong, but it looks like, right? <laughs> so, and it's just relaxed. Hello, hello. It doesn't go out like this. It just goes, it's like a salute, right? But it, relax, hello. Hello. Now, yeah, don't go wet. Don't go out with it. That becomes a version of don't know. Okay. So it's just like, hey, hello. How you doing? Hey, hi. So it kind of comes from here. And it's the thing is, I think a lot of hearing people do that, but when they come to learning it in sign language, they go like this. But don't y'all, when you see somebody, you go, hey, right? Hearing people do that all the time. So don't think it's different when it's sign in that sense. Just yeah. Hey, how are you doing? What's up? Good. Hello. Now we're going to learn nice to meet you in a whole phrase. And in ASL, it's not nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> English. We're not here to learn English. Wait, you wouldn't want to learn English from me anyway. Believe it. So nice to meet you becomes nice meet directional to the person you're meeting. So nice is a nice open B hand shape and you put it palm up. Oop, I gotta make sure you can see me like that. Put it like across you like this. Doesn't have to be that way, but just like that. Nice palm up, flat hand. Beautiful. And now you're gonna take the other open B and you're just gonna slide it over to the end of your finger. If you go all the way out, it's gonna start becoming clean. So nice. Just one nice smooth move. See it? Watch where my, I'm gonna show you up this way where my hands are going from right from here to here. So it's this part of your hand going over this part of your hand. Good. So when you say meet you, it's two number ones and they represent the people. This represents me and this represents the person I'm meeting. And they just gently meet. They don't do this, they do this. I'm gonna do it this way. They just gently come together, palm to palm, palm to palm. Palms, there you go, palms facing each other. Let me see, let me see. I'm just gonna look because I wanna make something really clear about me. Oh good, only one finger. Whew, okay, that was close. <laughs> All right, the reason I say that, it has to be one finger. If you go nice to and you do it with two Vs, you are saying something really, 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 really bad. And you don't want to do that because you're inviting uh, trouble. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I know I have children here. It's not going to happen, but it's nice to, uh, I'll, say the, I'll say the scientific health word, fornicate with you. And you don't want to do that the first time you meet somebody. I mean, unless you do, and that's not on me, I no judgment. <laughs> so, but just don't. My mother did it to a class and she never signed again even though everybody thought it was adorable. So it's nice, and then you just to meet you, and it goes towards the person you're meeting. So watch, I'm gonna do it this way. This is the sign for meet all by itself. And let them touch like this. Don't do this, that would be date. See, if you do it with a D, it's a number one. Let me get closer. Is that better? Can you see it better? So they can just touch where your thumbs are, have your thumbs touch. Yeah, so it would be, meet you say they meet in the middle so there's your person there's your person nice to meet you yeah beautiful so again don't do it as a d that's a date and again you're going to invite i don't know things into your life as bad as probably if you did it with two v's so either nice to you or nice to date you is not maybe something you want to say to the first time you meet somebody so <laughs> nice to meet you so that's nice to meet you in one whole phrase so 
Let's do, hi, nice to meet you. Ready? Beautiful. See, you just learned a whole phrase to introduce yourself, right? You learned that beginning thing. And what I also want you guys to practice is your finger spelling of your name after tonight's class. Because Thursday, I'm going to say hi, nice to meet you, or nice to see you. And I'm going to show you how to say what's your name, right? We're going to go through all this. And I want to be able to have all of you introduce yourselves with your name. Now, if you have a long name, shorten it to your nickname if you want to. If you want to tackle your whole name, Absolutely take it on. So, how you, how are you? Not a C, it's this. Your thumbs are out. And you bring it here. Now, as with all the questions of how, who, what, where, when, why, face. So you're asking a question. And it just goes out, it directions to that person. Good. You see what I mean? So it's well, I'm going to do it this way so you can see it from this angle. And it's just smooth. It goes from this. Now watch, you're just keeping it in front of your solar plexus. And it oh it keep the fingers together and just gently, very easy. You don't have to do that. That's it. That's how. That's as little as it is. How? Good. So now you know how to do all that. Can you see my board? You can't go. We all have those days, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, good. It's an open B hand shape and it faces you. Now, don't confuse that with thank you. Good. So let me see you guys do good. Now you don't have to touch your face. It's just from now. Don't do that. That's you're gonna get some Italian really angry. <laughs> if you go, <clears throat> just saying I'm Italian, I know. <laughs> now, want to sign good. They want it, they want to put it in their hand to really emphasize. If that helps you remember the difference between good and thank you, by all means, do good and slap it into your hand, your, your palm up like that. So you can go, if that helps you to remember the difference, by all means, do whatever helps you remember it. And it's not incorrect. But if you don't include your facial expression, we're not going to know the difference between your good and your thank you. So make sure you. You can go. Bad. So good goes out. So you take it and you do this.
Now, how bad will depend on your face? So you just kind of take the good and slap it on the floor. And it's a negative, anything negative. Now we're gonna do our questions. These are very important because your facial expressions are crucial. When you ask the WH questions, we need to see See the shape of it? On, on your face, right here, on, right under your lip. See, I'm trying to show you, can you see it? And I wanna see You see, I'm gonna, I'm looking, keep doing it, keep doing it. I'm just looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Good, good. Now there's two different ways to sign. Now the difference, I'm going to explain the grammar using my voice, is if you say your name, what is your name? You'd say what? You wouldn't say your name what? This is used for a whole different meaning of what in a different context. So if you're asking a question, this is very standard. You can just say what? I use this for everything. It's just, you're basically just very gently, you don't have to do that, right? Just very gently and question. Good. It's a little harder one. You have two hands. One is here and you're gonna do this. I'm gonna take it close. So the finger does this and it turns and touches your, the, the pad of your finger. Now I'm gonna go around and watch you guys. Can you see me? Um, one, your palms should be facing each other. So I'm just gonna make sure you have proper form. So that goes like that. There's better, good, good, good. Two ways to sign it. I always teach my students how deaf people sign it as opposed to how hearing teachers teach it because you, I want my students to be able to understand deaf people when we sign and we sign sometimes a little bit differently. So I teach the way we sign. The first way that is the very uh, clean, clear way to sign it is you're gonna take this open B and you're gonna just pull it straight down into the hand shape Y. Watch, see it's coming from here, watch just goes straight down. You just slide it to there. You don't have to bring it any further than that. Okay, so now, deaf people. I do not sign Y like that. I do not, and nobody that I know that's deaf does. That's a, the right way to sign it, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's very clear, and it's very clean, and if you're emphasizing it, you can go. So if you're emphasizing, that's the one you want to use, right? If you're really going, yeah, right? But if it's just your general conversational, this is how you do it. You're going to turn it. This is, it's the same almost, your hand is, palm is facing your face. So it's this movement. And it just can be right here at the side of your head. Good. 
good. So again, this is not wrong, but you'll be hard pressed to see a deaf person use it unless we're going. Do you see how you'd use that as opposed to? You see the difference? As opposed to going, you cut your hair, why? As opposed to, right? So for conversational purposes, but we need to see your face, ask the question, remember? Yeah, don't turn it this way and I'll tell you why. That's 25. So when I explain that things are very important that they're placed in a certain way, it's because it can completely change the sign if it's not put the right way. So it faces your head. I'm gonna, let's see how I gotta do it this way, you can see it. Shoulder up. Good. So let's go back and do who, what, where, when, why. Okay. <laughs> we'll stop soon because you guys are getting tired, I can tell. Um, so who? I'm going to turn this way too. So it just kind of touches your chin. Good. What? Good. Where? Good. When? I'm going to look. Everybody do a when again so I can see you guys. It's hard to see. Good. Wow. And there you go. So you got your question. So your ABCs, nice to meet you, how you, your answer, good, fine, eh, bad. Practice those because the next class, I'm going to ask you guys, I don't want to see your answer and I won't be using my voice. Now I have to for some of this because this is hard to see. Again, I don't have that. So I'm, I'm going to try to not use it. Once you've learned them, I'm going to go back to how I teach during my classes without my voice at all, okay? But in the very beginning, trying to get it done, it's hard, it's hard to do this. Because, yeah, I'll just drop something. <laughs> so. And very quickly, I'm going to do, oh my God, see, this is why this is hard. The singular you, me, there, those possessives, that, because it's so easy. You, it's just a number one hand shape. Them, they, her, him, it's just pointing. <laughs> I know that's hard, right? I see you laughing. <laughs> just, you just point. You, me, her, him, them, they. So the singular is one finger. Makes sense, right? So the possessives, my, your, theirs, is an open B. My, your. Points right out. Got to stay straight up. Don't do this. Straight up like this. Make that wrist nice and tight. Hers, his, theirs. That makes sense, right? Because the singular is one finger and the possessive is the whole hand. So my name, your name, her name, right? Me, deaf, you, hearing, that kind of thing. So the singular is always one and you point. But it's also the same thing for over there, up there, upstairs, down there, over there. Yeah, point. So you just learned a whole lot of 
across them. It's just pointing. Makes sense, right? See, it's not that hard. Now we're starting easy. My students can tell you it gets harder. <laughs> but this is why I do this in certain order. Because every lesson I build so that we're developing a whole level of communication. Um, I'm going to give you right and wrong, yes, no, and maybe, and then we're going to cut. This has been long. We're, I wasn't expecting to go this long. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, is your head nodding in an S? And your head has to do it. It's not, that would sound like this. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -mm. No is take, it's like a number three. You're going to, so I'm going to do it this way so you can see, well, closer. Can you see it? So it's just that. Now, when you do that, this does not do this. I've had students do that and I have to stop them. Your head goes no, and this just stays still. So if you go, no, 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 right? Maybe, now I know y'all do this, hearing people do this all the time, right? You go, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. It's the same thing. The nice number five, and they just, you wanna go out? Yeah, maybe. You hungry? Maybe. You like her? Yeah, not so much, no. <laughs> so, good. Um, now, right and wrong. Because when I, we start doing more in the, on Thursday and I stop using my voice, I want to tell you that's right or that's wrong. So right is two number ones. And I'm going to show you this way. And they hit right here. At this part, this, this deep knuckle of your hand, it's going to hit right here. You see what I'm talking about? At the top of your thumb, this knuckle. And this, is going to, this part is going to hit right here. So, so it's not here. It's not this. It's... So let me look and see y'all. Make it a nice, it's a nice number one. Don't make it a D because that will be a different sign. Don't do it at the wrist. It hits just like this. They're sitting like this and they hit here. Can you see the part of my hand? I'm gonna try to do it right here. Can you see it? Right on here. So you're just gonna go. So let me look at everybody and make sure we got it right. Now, wrong, I, I know my, my students are laughing at me because I have such a heavy New York accent. My, my friends laugh so much at my accent. Sorry, I want coffee and you're wrong. Uh, and I want to talk, it's how I sound, I apologize. No, I'm not, sorry, not sorry, hey. Okay, <laughs> so I have a very heavy New York accent. So S is your, is your is, no, what am I doing? Wrong, geez, I just went sorry, no. Wrong is a Y and you're gonna do this. This face, too. Now, I'm going to tell you to be very careful. I have hurt myself. If you're really mad and you're trying to tell somebody they're really wrong and you're so mad, you're going to be... I have bruised, cut. If I have... Oh, sign language can be very dangerous. Take off jewelry. If you have really long nails, be very careful. Some things are just going to cut you up. Okay, and I'm very honest about that. There's nothing wrong with nails, but you're gonna have to have to figure out how to do it without hurting yourself things. I have somebody who had long nails and they went not and literally cut their whole chin. Okay, so sign language is very physical. So that, no, I tell people, these are the good hints I'm gonna give you as another little lesson. Try to wear, don't wear long jewelry because I, I can't tell you how many necklaces I've literally gone. Um, so when you're practicing sign, try to keep it simple. And if you don't, like I used to wear big chunky rings. Now around deaf people, I can't because we're all used to it. But when you're practicing and you're a beginner, it's important to keep everything clean because you don't want to go, you know, wear rings here or something and go, you'll hurt yourself for real. It's not even a joke. 
And depending on how mad you are or how wrong somebody is and how you're trying to tell, you make a eh, eh. So hit yourself gently and use your face to say how wrong they are, <laughs> right? I'm trying to look, yeah, exactly. There you go, Kimberly. So do it in the face, not er. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, see, now you see what I'm talking about when I discuss facial expressions, right? If you go, huh? Right? Your facial expressions. So just like, like Kimberly did a good one. Yeah, you just kind of, and it's the face. That, however wrong is the face. So right, let me see your right, correct. Good, good. So now on Thursday when I see y'all and I, and I go, you'll know what I'm saying. And if I go, then I'll fix it. But now you're going to understand. And I'm going to show, okay, I just thought I'm going to show you two more that are very important because if you don't understand me, I need to know, right? As a deaf person and you're talking to a deaf person, if I'm signing too fast and I don't know you're not understanding me, I'm going to keep going. That's just what we do. We assume you understand us, right? So understand it's like the you're turning on the light bulb on your head turn your fist facing you so this is i'm going to show you this way but your fist is going to face you here pop up the finger and your head goes yeah i understand it's the light bulb going on i get it that's all i get it do you get it right so don't understand is that's all it is is just a negative hand, head shake. So you thought it was going to be more complicated than that, didn't you? Now I see some people go, I'm like, why are you signing not understand when you're still doing this? We get it. I get it. So on Thursday, if you're lost or if I go too fast and I'm doing something, you can kind of go, and as we keep going in lessons and I stop using my voice, you know, more and more and less and less, then you can go. And I'll go back and I'll slow down and I'll do it again. Okay. <laughs> you guys, I'm trying to look. Oh my God, this lesson has been like as long as my regular classes. I had to get used to this whole system and I get carried away when I teach. My students can tell you I could teach for like hours without stopping. Um, but I want to ask you, did you have fun? You know your signs for yes. I want to say them um, or no. If you didn't, let me know because then I can change something. Yes. Did you learn a lot? <laughs> what do you say? Karen, what are you saying? You don't remember? I see I read her lips. You'll remember it. I promise you'll remember it. And rem okay, this is the other thing. I review a lot. So don't worry about it. I have like every third class or so I go back and I do a quick review, review, review. Because what happens is by the time you get to like the third class, you learned, you know, 25, 30, 40 vocabulary words, you forget what I taught in the first class. So every third class I go back without my voice and I'll do a list or whatever and we review so you will get it and this is the first time for most of you how many people was this is their first time being exposed to learning sign how many see so it's your first time what are you expecting girl we expect to be like no but you did great and all of your hand shapes in your form nice Nice to meet you too. See, you did remember. You remembered. See that, you silly. You guys did awesome. I'm so proud of you. And I know we went a little long, but I really wanted to kind of emphasize, especially the beginning stuff. So what I'd like you to do for Thursday is to practice your alphabet and practice finger spelling your name. Okay. Now, if you have a long name and you, you use a shortened version, 
Like I'm Jennifer and I'm Red Jen, but when I fingerspell my name, it's Jennifer. Now, if I was a beginner, I might just sign Jen. So do whatever is comfortable for you, however you feel good about it, but practice. And now a good way to practice is in front of a mirror. Go into your bathroom or set up a mirror like by your computer and watch and you can go. Don't ever do this. Why? Because it's not important what it looks like to you. It's important what it looks like to the person looking at you. So if you're looking in a mirror, right, you can see what it looks like from the perspective of the person who needs to understand, right? So practice that, practice these signs. I'm going to uh, post the video. Yes, yeah, well, Anne's got it easy, please. You got Anne. I'm, I want you to do your whole name now. See, now you are a smarty pants. Anne was a smarty pants. She goes, Anne, now that you're being a smarty pants, I want to see your whole name. <laughs> see what happens? Don't cross me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, did you all have fun? Will I see you Thursday? All right, I'll see you Thursday. Let's give you guys a really big hand. You were awesome. I am so proud of you. I'm so happy you're here. Thank all, oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being part of this. I'm so glad to see you. Stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. And I'll see you all Thursday at seven o'clock.